3 dmjers what is going on? This is Eric Helms, and this is the first installment of my series called Science and Application with Eric Helms, also known as Say What? And we're going to be getting into some science right now. What is going on, 3 dmjers This is the disembodied voice of Eric Helms. We're going to talk some science and some application for weightlifting today. Uh, this might be boring for those of you who are, you know, ADD, no attention span, I need to see flashing light colors and all that kind of stuff. Those of you who want to learn stuff, stick around. Um, and we're going to talk about some warming up type of material. All right. So uh, warming up, something we all do before we lift the weights. Uh, however, I see a lot of confusion around why people warm up and what they think they're trying to accomplish. Uh, one of those things is that a lot of people seem to think that the warming up that they do is this is mobility work, right? Um, we toss around mobility a lot. We don't really know what we're talking about. People think they need to get mobile before their training, and I'm not saying mobility is a bad thing, but the true purpose of a warm-up before you lift weights, when we're talking about strength athletes and bodybuilders, is to actually prepare you for training, which is going to be high force output uh, strength training, typically with uh, free weights and some machines if you're, you know, uh, of the of the physique ilk. Um, so, what are the purposes of, of, of a warm-up and, and how do we prepare ourselves for training? Are we trying to enhance our performance? Are we trying to reduce our injury risk? And if so, how do we do that? Well, uh, the main thing that a warm-up does that is benef beneficial is it increases body temperature. This sounds like something very simple, uh, and, it, and it actually is. Physiologically, it's just your body temperature going up, but there's some beneficial effects from that which might surprise you. Uh, warming up and increasing body temperature can increase your muscle blood flow and oxygen availability, which makes your muscles more efficient. Uh, it also increases neuromuscular speed and sensitivity, so the actual speed at which you can contract and how sensitive uh, the neuromuscular system is to contraction and getting ready for training. Uh, this is in stark contrast. Uh, if you think about the goal of what we're doing here with a warm-up to a mobility session, I have seen a lot of people spend 30, 40 minutes uh, before they ever even start doing their actual warm-up sets with the barbell, um, doing all kinds of nonsense, not to just be hardcore about it, but it, I don't think it actually serves a really good purpose of doing a lot, a lot of stretching, a lot, a lot of mobility, uh, band opening stretches, all kinds of drills, all related to, to increasing the range of motion and, uh, and trying to get, you know, basically pain down. And if you have to spend 30 minutes to get mobile and get your pain reduced, maybe there's a deeper issue at, at, at play there and you actually might want to go see a specialist. Um, and again, we're not talking about being like Olympic lifters or necessarily CrossFitters having to get into very difficult end range of motion positions here. I'm mainly talking to you uh, bodybuilders and powerlifters. When you're doing squat, bench, deadlift, overhead press, rows, pull downs, and isolation work uh, with some other stuff sprinkled in. It shouldn't take you 30 to 40 minutes just to be able to move unless you've got some kind of prior injury uh, or maybe... You're, you're, you're dealing with kind of a chronic thing that you just can't quite uh, address medically on its own. But remember, the point here is that we're, we're, we're getting ready to perform, okay? We don't need to be any more mobile than we need to be. And we'll keep talking about that. So, a uh, big question here is, is should there be, if we're going to be addressing mobility at, at all uh, and, and re working with range of motion, should we be doing static stretching or should we be doing some kind of dynamic movement? So let's talk about static stretching. This has traditionally been a part of warm-ups, something that coaches have advised for ages as you stretch before you train, right? You want to make sure you have full range of motion, you're pliable, you can move, decent theory behind it. Uh, however, there are some downsides to it. If you think about it, if you are actually stretching to the point where you have elongated the, the muscle tendon unit, that's not a very good thing for contracting, right? That, that That's actually making yourself limber and relaxed is not a a good thing immediately prior towards making hard contractions and doing high force movements. So it can actually reduce muscular performance if done acutely and significant stretching. I'm not talking about just kind of, oh, I stretch my arm out a little bit on the bench before I bench. But if you're doing like active, more than a minute long, holding a stretch in an aggressive position, that can reduce your performance uh, in, in weightlifting. Um, as far as injury risk reduction, there's mixed data on this. It's, it's very difficult to say whether or not uh, static stretching reduces injury. If it does, it, it probably wouldn't be a huge amount. Um, so anyway, let's talk about uh, dynamic stretching. 
Um, first off, dynamic stretching, it doesn't have that potential to reduce performance. And it, it's kind of the same thing with injury risk. If it does re reduce the risk of injury, it's no more than static. In fact, they're probably equal. So, you know, at face value, it seems like dynamic uh, kind of mobility type of movements, explosive stretching, whatever you want to call it, not necessarily ballistic stretching, is about on, on par with static stretching as far as injury risk, but will not reduce, uh, reduce uh, performance. In fact, it has the potential to improve performance for the reasons that I discussed earlier as far as increasing blood flow and basically getting your neuromuscular system ready to fire. Okay. Now, it's important to remember that dynamic stretching needs to be done in an explosive manner. Uh, just like if you were to do a squat and it was heavy and you took the barbell off your back and someone just magically snapped their fingers and the barbell disappeared, you would jump in the air. You're trying to create a high force output. So when you're moving your body through space, it should look relatively explosive. These aren't kind of a slow Tai Chi type of movement. We're not doing just kind of moving stretching. There should be an explosive nature to it to some degree. It doesn't need to be crazy, uh, but it should be relatively aggressive. Okay, so it does have a potential to improve performance for that reason. Uh, and it's unclear if it reduces injury uh, or the risk of injury rather, but it, it, it might. So why not, right? It's always better to, to, to take a shot at trying to reduce injury risk if we can, even if we're not sure about it. So moving on, what about flexibility? I, I kind of bagged on mobility in the beginning, but let's be honest, not all of us have uh, great mobility. And there is a place for true flexibility work for some of us who just don't have great range of motion in certain uh, movements or certain body parts. So the f important thing to remember is that mobility is not a, a good thing in and of itself. Like you just want as much as you possibly can. Everyone should be able to do, uh, you know, pick a quarter up off the ground with their butt cheeks while they're in an overhead squat position. That's not necessary. Uh, you only need as much as you need. So you need to be as mobile as you need to be to perform your lifts safely and with good form while keeping sound biomechanics. That's it, okay? However, for those who need more mobility than they currently have, if they can't do that, that's when you need to think about, okay, how do I do it so it doesn't negatively influence my performance? Easily done, just don't do it prior to training. You can stretch afterwards, you can stretch later in the day, uh, you can do basic static stretching, there's still definitely a role for that, and it's a very straightforward way of, of working on your mobility. However, let's be honest, a lot of us, you know, we do our training in the gym and we're not in the gym, we got other stuff to do. We got lives, we got families, and it's very difficult to kind of compartmentalize so that we are, you know, stretching at night, for example. Or maybe we finish working at the gym and we just want to get the heck out of there. So we know that we're not going to consistently stretch after training or at the times of the day. Well, you've got, you've got options. One thing is you can actually stretch and then do a dynamic warm up afterwards, and that will kind of re get you ready for training, basically. You know, you might have elongated the muscle group, great, you got that flexibility. If you were then to do an explosive dynamic warm up, your body is kind of switching gears and going, oh, okay, I guess you don't want me doing yoga, we're going to lift some weights, that's fine. It should reduce any negative effects. Uh, additionally, like I said, if it's not aggressive, if it's less than 60 seconds, if you're not really elongating the muscle tendon unit, it's not going to negatively affect performance. However, the thing there is that then you're probably not actually getting a flexibility benefit. Uh, another another one is foam rolling, or what some people will call myofascial release, which I think is a slightly uh, misleading term, but it's it's a common term. Foam rolling can actually increase range of motion, but it doesn't seem to decrease force production, and that's because it works with a slightly different mechanism. You're probably getting a neuromuscular response. We're not quite sure, but point being, if you if you foam roll. Uh, you, you can increase range of motion uh, probably by some different mechanism than static stretching, and it doesn't seem to reduce performance. Um, now, when would you actually want to even stretch prior to training? Uh, rarely would this be the case, but sometimes you might have a specific muscle group that is preventing you from proper execution of form. Let's say you have very tight calves, and you can't hit depth without a butt wink or coming onto your toes. You might actually want to statically stretch and foam roll your calves prior to squatting. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, and I wouldn't even say that's a big deal because honestly, the calves aren't going to be a big component to force production in a squat. Likewise, let's say you have tight shoulders or a tight chest and you're trying to do low bar squats and it's a very difficult position to be in during low bar squats, you could probably stretch your pecs if you're not going to be training upper body that day, no problem. So I'm not saying that you never statically stretch, there's a time and a place for it, okay? So what does it all look like? Well, from what we've seen in research and what I've just talked to you about, 
probably what makes the most sense to do is to have multiple components to your warm-up. Basically, you want to do something to get your temperature, your core temperature up. Then you want to do your dynamic warm-up to increase uh, your, your, you know, to basically move explosively through a range of motion. And then you want to do your sports-specific warm-up. Uh, those are all the components. Now, I personally think that the sub-maximal aerobic warm-up, just to get body temperature up, in most cases is redundant. Uh, that's because the dynamic warm-up is going to serve that same purpose. Uh, and for someone who is just someone who lifts weights, the sports-specific warm-up is just basically your warm-up sets be before you get to a working weight. So that's why I focus so much time on the dynamic warm-up. Now, this is just one example. This is the one I like to do. I swing my legs back and forth to the side to the side. And this isn't a just casual swing. This is active muscularly swinging them. I do some arm circles forwards and back. I do some cross body slaps to get my pecs activated, especially if I'm going to bench. And I do some lunges with some rotation. That's just what I personally do. This is not the best warm up in the world. It's not the worst. There's a million ways to do it. So long as you're moving all of the, the muscles that are going to train through a full range of motion explosively, then you're going to get the, the benefits. And this is kind of a minimalistic sports specific warm up that, I, that I've shown here to do with lower or higher reps. You can certainly do more or less, whatever you need to do to get your form ingrained, to feel prepared for the heavy weights you're going to lift thing and do it. You're good to go. Um, so that's basically uh, what it would here look like. Here we have basically the, the references from all that, for those of you nerds. And also on the right, just an example of my good friend, Dr. Mike Zerdos, uh, powerlifting coach, powerlifter, uh, professor at Florida. Atlantic University studying uh, muscle physiology and, and powerlifting and strength conditioning, all the cool stuff. Good buddy of mine. Just going through uh, a version of a dynamic warm-up. You can tell he's going through it very explosively, uh, kind of like I talked about earlier. Uh, again, there is no right or wrong way to do it. I'll speed him up here just so it goes a little faster, so he's not actually moving this fast from here on out. Um, but as you can tell, still moved explosively. Uh, went through full range of motion, did a few different exercises. Definitely, you can tell he'd get his heart rate up from this. And that is essentially uh, the way one can do dynamic warm-ups. There's no wrong or right way to do it. Uh, just make sure that it meets all the requirements we talked about here. And uh, you will be ready to train. All right. That's it for the first episode of Science and Application with Eric Helms. Say what? And I will see you next time.